Hi guys, I hope you all doing well under the given situation. Although we are not able to meet in person, but it's nice to use this unique way to share my project with you all. Okay, um, my today's topic is how voice virtual assistant can help improve the user experience of smart homes. So let's begin with what are smart homes. There is a general but a bit vague definition of smart homes. It says smart homes provide uh, home security, convenience, and energy efficiency by controlling smart devices on a mobile app, virtual assistant, or other network devices. But um, this vague definition gives house sellers and their agents a chance to use the term to boost prices and sales because there is a perception that if you name it as a smart home, it would be showed faster. Um, so there is another definition to define the industry standards of smart homes. That is um, a home that is equipped with net, uh, network connected products for controlling, automating, and optimizing functions such as temperature, lighting, security, safety or entertainment, either remotely by a phone, tablet, computer, or a separate system within the home itself. So this definition is uh, more detailed and more clear as well, which are more applicable, uh, which would be more suitable for market use. And actually, smart homes are a part of the Internet of Things, since the devices operate together to share consumer usage data among themselves and automating actions based on the homeowner's defense, uh, commands. So there could be various technologies involved in smart homes, but my research mainly focused on virtual voice assistant since it's one of the most advanced AI techs in recent years. So a well-accepted definition of virtual assistant is um, it's a digital assistant that uses voice recognition, natural language processing, and speech synthesis to provide aid to users through phones and voice recognition applications as well. Um, so currently, the voice assistant can fulfill tasks like doing searches, sending message, answering question, controlling smart home devices as well. And in the in the future, we can expect that if the um, technology, especially the AI and machine learning technology keep uh, developing, um, the voice assistant can learn more and improve, improve more to give her more convenience and seamless experience for the users. Well, in terms of the time frame for the adoption of uh, voice technology, because of the dynamic and changing chase of voice assistant, there is no widely accepted agreement on the time frame of this technology. Therefore, um, this section would mainly talk about the current and future adoption of voice assistants in terms of the device migration, market penetration, and capabilities as well. So I hope we can provide you a full picture of the current landscape and the future directions. So this is one of the uh, biggest and well-known voice, uh, voice technology research organization called the VoiceBot. Uh, and, and it suggests that there are two phases in voice technology adoption. Phase one begins with 2011 when iPhone first introduced series and it has two parts, um, one on smartphones and another one on smart speakers. As you may notice, voice technology in these phases uh, developed and adopted on a single and particular devices, smart home, uh, smartphone or smart speakers. So their capabilities are kind of low levels and limited as well. But um, as the area of multiple devices and more advanced features in the approaching year of 2000 and 
19, White Spot has concluded that phase, uh, the phase one was ended in 2018, so we now have already entered the phase two. So phase two predicts that voice would become a persuasive interaction mode that enables more capabilities and would be used more frequently across multiple devices and social contexts as well. Let's also take a look at the adoption of voice assistant market based on Roger's uh, diffusion of uh, innovation theory. And according to Microsoft's, uh, Microsoft's voice report, the voice technology owes a 90% daily usage, showing that uh, this technology has already across the, across the technology, across the Cousin stage from the early adopter to the early majority of user. And as voice assistants continue to improve, um, it will get smarter, learn more, and engage with us differently. So we can expect consumer to use the, use the voice assistant on a more regular basis. And hopefully it can like uh, become one of the mainstream, one of the product in the mainstream market. Besides of the growth of the user base, there would be more um, capabilities in the future AI assistance as well. And there are mainly three points for the future capabilities to grow. Um, the first one is there would be like uh, more and better personalizations. So in the future, the AI assistant may be able to talk back to users the way users like to be addressed. For example, users can choose to be answered with more emo emotive or with dense detail information. So the AI assistants can basically tailor the dialogue to the user to whatever the user want. The second one is um, the assistant will get getting more pro uh, proactive. So instead of waiting for a command from the user to do something, in the future, the voice assistant will be able to like predict user's need and accomplish the task pro proactively. The last one is also like uh, they might have some new interaction methods with the development of emotion checking and facial recognition technology in the future. Voice assistant would have uh, the potential to detect users by biological signals and maybe like draw some conclusion and get some feedback from them and uh, maybe like uh, based on that they can make more diverse types of interactions to the users. So as for the actors in the space, I have addressed four main influential actors, the consumer lawmaker, technology companies, and the third party uh, partners as well. So for the consumer, consumers desire to save house energy and add more security to home, help boost the uh, smart home market, but there, is still a, but there is also raising concerns of privacy for example, the misuse of the data and the potential spying from the government. So it calls out the emergency of setting up laws and rules to regulate the smart homes industry. There are mainly two levels of uh, laws and regulation, the federal level and the state level. So currently, we now have the uh, Cyber Security Improvement Act of 2019 in the federal level and California also passed a bill regulating smart home devices in 2018. However, lawmakers are still playing catch up with technology. This is more of a virus in the emerging tech field like AI, which may be caused by the difficulty in predicting the chance of development. As for the tech companies, especially the unicorns, they play an important role in technology research and development, as well as their market promotion. 
However, there is not only one single player in this game. As competition is a fact for almost any market, corporations seem to be more、uh, important in this emerging tech market. As the tech player need to like overcome the barriers created by the fragmented and inconsistent application standard mentioned in the last sections. And the last one is the third-party partners. There are actually mainly two types of third-party partners here. The、uh, household application manufacturers and audio content providers. The former is responsible for producing the hardware of digital devices and and partner with tech company to integrate the voice systems like the Alexa system. The latter, as the producer or provider of audio content, like、uh, the music. The news content, audio book, and so on. They can put their content onto the smart speakers so that they can earn more exposures and audience on the emerging platform. So the key challenges I identify in the smart home space are mainly three points. Um, the first one is the privacy and ethical issues with voice technologies. So my recommendation are for the tech companies. I think they should be transparent about the data collection and protect user and protect users through strong security and encryptions. For the lawmaker. Um, they need to like work closely with the tech builders to quickly carry out laws and rules to regulate their industry. The second one is the compatibility with the current install base and other brands' devices, and to make voice technology compatible with the current install base, I think it requires tech company to have cooperation with the. Manufacturers and it should be a long-term following and updating of the systems, and to make compatibility across different brands' devices, more action should be taken to like facilitate the cooperation among the tech companies, so that the users can sim、um, seamlessly use the voice so service regardless of the brands. The last challenge is the capabilities limitation of the voice technology, which might hurt adoption of the market. But、um, the most important recommendation is for the tech companies; they should keep studying the、uh, technology like AI, adaptive learning, and predictive analytics, which would power virtual assistants in the future. So that's basically. All of my projects.、Um, thank you for your watching. And if you have any thoughts or comments, you are welcome to leave me a comment in the cameras discussion section. So, thank you.